loss to, to Joshua in 2016 was probably the biggest stepping stone of my career. I learned a lot of stuff. I did a lot of things wrong. Of course, I did a couple things right, but I didn't do enough to get the win that night, and I got stopped. So in this situation, I went back and analyzed that fight, play after play, punch after punch, minute after minute. <coughs> Excuse me. I learned a lot more from that one loss than I did to all the other wins that I had, right? And uh, a lot of it is going to go into play. It went into play in my last three knockout wins to get to become the WC mandatory. Um, it's going to go into play this Saturday night. And uh, you're going to see a different, different fighter, man. It's, it's something the heavyweight division needs. And uh, you guys are going to be surprised to see what you, see what you see on Saturday night. You know, Deontay, is every, every opponent he's faced that's touched the canvas, why are you going to be different than that, those other guys that, those other 40 guys that stood in front of him? Because about 90% about 90, 90 of the opponents Deontay Wilder fought, you could have beat, man. There ain't no way in hell I'm giving him credit for that. Fury, okay, that was a draw, but I still think Fury won that. Uh, 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 Ortiz, Ortiz had him beat. The referee helped him out of that situation, gave him a long walk, gave him a long breather. Uh, Washington had him beat a couple times, he got caught with the right hand. It happens, man, it's heavyweight boxing. Everybody's like, wow, they got a big right hand. He got this, he got that. Man, I got a big right hand. I got a big left hook. Put several individuals down on the canvas. A lot of guys don't get up. Right? Nobody gives me credit for all oh, right hand, this right hand, that. That's because all the other does is talk and talk and talk and talk. Uh, put the uh, proofs in the pudding, man. Come Saturday night. Let's see who lands that first right hand first, and let's see who can take it, and let's see who's ass on the canvas. You come, as, you come out in the press conference tomorrow. I like nah. this intensity. No, nah, man, I'm not gonna come out of the press conference. Like I said, I'm a professional individual. I'm gonna stay in my lane, man. Um, but at the same time, I gotta defend myself. I'm a fighter. I'm a dog at heart. Uh, but I'm a professional individual. You guys wouldn't like a fight to break out right in front of you, right? We'd love to see a Saturday night inside that ring, right? So that's what I'm gonna give you. Saturday night, it's gonna be a dog hard fight. You know, I've been staying away from the social media stuff. I've been staying away from the interviews and things. Uh, Wilder's been saying some crazy stuff. I don't think he means it, man. I think he's in a situation where he's got to talk and talk and talk until he finally feels comfortable in what he's doing. Uh, he's got to build himself up just so he can feel like I, I'm, I'm able to do this, I'm able to do that. Um, I, ain't t I, I haven't looked at it the way most people have looked at it. I know he said, you know, he wanted a body on his record and he wanted to kill me or whatever it may be. Let, let him say all he wants to say. That's like a little chihuahua barking and barking at the fence. As soon as the fence gets opened up, he's like, uh, damn, uh, what do I do now? So come Saturday night, man. Man on man, one on one, we in the room, we gotta square up. You gotta, you gotta do what you've been saying you're gonna do. <laughs> hell no, the fight goes the distance. How in the hell are you gonna have two heavyweights? Nobody in that arena wants to see that fight go the distance. I know for sure it's going to be fireworks from the opening bell. First, second, third. There might be a calm before the big storm in the fifth and the sixth. But I guarantee it's definitely not going the distance. Donald, you see yourself on that poster behind you. How does it make you feel to be on this stage? When man, people, it's, people great. it's great. Football. It's great, man. It's great, man. I keep telling everybody this is my Super Bowl. Coming from football, you play to get to the playoffs. You play to get to the Super Bowl. I've gone through the regular season. I've gone through the playoffs. And sure enough, I'm football week, man. This, this is my Super Bowl. Uh, this is the media workout before the Super Bowl. I'm super excited, man. It's the world stage. It don't get any bigger than this. I've been doing this 10 years now. And uh, it's been a long, long road. There's been a lot of ups and downs. I learned some things. I gained some things. Gained some weight. Dropped some weight. A little bit faster. Light on my feet. But come Saturday night, it's Super Bowl time. There ain't, there ain't no second guessing yourself. It's all about confidence. It's all about glory. Where's your, where your swag level at? Cause look, it's on a 15. Hey, <laughs> it's on a 15. You're right, man. It's off the Richter scale right now. Hey, it's, it's super. It's super exciting. Hey, Dominic, it seems visibly that Deontay's gotten bigger in this particular fight. Um, what are your thoughts of him coming in heavier uh, in this fight, opposed to uh, weighing in in the fight? Listen, man. I keep telling you guys, he's scared. If I had to get in the ring with somebody bigger than me, heavier than me, what's the first thing I'm gonna do? Get my ass in the gym put some pounds on. You know what I mean? He got in there with Fury, and we all know Fury can't crack. He's a great defensive fighter, but he ain't got punching power to be 6'10", six, six, 265 pounds, something like that. But when he got touched by Fury, he wobbled a little bit. Now you're getting in the ring with a guy, 250 pounds, might be a little lighter, 248, 247, don't mark my word on weighing on Friday, but solid 6'7", 250 pounds. You better believe when I touch him on the chin, he gonna be thinking, oh my God. I didn't eat enough. I didn't eat enough bread, potatoes. I didn't have enough protein. There's not not enough weight in the world that you could put on before in a 10 week, 15 week, 16 week camp before you get in the ring and facing a guy, a guy my size. Um, at the same time, he understands he's been light in the ass for a long time, man. I think he fought his life's fight 212 pounds. That ain't a heavyweight division. Go, go, stop. Don't eat a cheeseburger. Have a night of sleep and wake up a cruiserweight the next night. Come on, man. Heavyweight division, you got to be at least 235 plus to hang out in this division. Man, got my knees weak right now. And new, man. I, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be emotional. I don't know if I'm gonna be thinking about Disneyland. Um, 
it's, it's, it's something that, that I've, I've tried to rip time and time again. I'm a big guy, I'm mental imagery, and I go through fights several times before I actually get into the fight. Um, that's the one thing that I kept ending every scenario of mine. I might be in a 10 minute mental imagery and I'm going through sparring rounds or training rounds or, or exchanging jabs with Deontay Wilder and I see him go down and as soon as he hits the mat, the referee don't even count. I just hear, and the new crowd goes wild. It's a beautiful thing, man. It's a dream come true. I can't wait. Virgil did a great job of, uh, of breaking me down and uh, being the teacher that I needed. Um, I'm a student athlete first, also a professional athlete, but at the same time, anytime you can get a, a highly educated individual like Virgil Hunter with the accolades that he has to, to teach me and, and help me understand why I do what I do, uh, it's, it's out of this world. I, I was throwing the jab, just to throw the jab because I'm a big guy. Now I'm throwing the jab for purpose, a double jab, a triple jab. Um, you know, I got I got great reminders when I walk around the gym. Don Amos, he's a cut man. He's been in the camp with me for some time now, but I actually train as well. He does a phenomenal job of reminding me to step with my jab or to use a fast jab and a strong jab. Uh, there's a lot more scenarios that myself, Virgil Hunter, myself, Don Amos, that went through through camp that I can't wait to, to execute on Saturday night. Saturday night. You want, you want the rematch with um, right away, or? Man, if it, if it was my planning, definitely. I, I would love to be back in the ring 90 days from, from Saturday night, me and Anthony Joshua, somewhere here in the U.S. soil. Man, I know Joshua's making his debut June 1st here in New York. Um, that'd be one hell of a fight. Rematch me and Joshua for the Undisputed Heavyweight Championship, Las Vegas, Nevada, man. Um, I think that would be something the world need, definitely needs to see. And what do you think, what do you make of these three, um, opponent replacement? Um, Andrew Ruiz, man, I've actually had, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be in the ring with Andrew, Andrew Ruiz. Got fast hands, big punching power. Um, he's definitely got a hell of a shot. Do I, do I think he has enough time to train for Anthony Joshua? Not quite sure, man, but if it, if it, if it goes the way I'm thinking it does, Andrew Ruiz gets an early round stoppage because he's going to come out guns blazing. That's what he does. He's a bad, bad man. But at the same time, Joshua was a, a high caliber fighter. He's fought some of the best in the world, and he continues to do so. He's not, you know, slipping down. To sleep. You know, he could have took some some nobody that just crawled out of the bed yesterday. But instead, he takes a high caliber guy like Andrew Ruiz, and he's going to make a fight of him, man. He he wants to make one hell of a debut here in the U.S., and I'm looking forward to it, man. Uh, I'm I'm glad to be part of the heavyweight division right now. Hey, Dominic, uh, with the fact that if you won the WBC, uh, even looking if, not if, win. Granted, uh, uh, Jalen and White and Tyson Fury would have to fight for the mandatory position of that fight. Who do you think will win that fight and who would be more interested in you know, for me, uh, I'm a fan of every type of fighter. I, lo I love to give the fans what they want to see. They've been wanting me and Dylan White to fight for some time now. So if those two end up making a fight and, uh, and it goes down, I, I, I hope and pray that Dylan White gets the, the win on that one. Tyson Fury had a shot at the WC title. When I'm walking around with the WC title, I want the fans to pick who I fight next. I want them to see what they want to see. And as of right now, they want me to fight Dylan White. So that's what I'm asking. Deontay Wilder has 39 knockouts and 40 fights. Do you treat this as any other fight, or is that right now something that you want to stay away from? You know what, like I was saying earlier, the gentleman that was standing here, 39 knockouts and 40 fights, uh, how many of those are credible, man? How many of those guys are on that list you actually know their name, actually saw the fight? Uh, from what I understand, Wilder was fighting on cards and people didn't even know he was fighting, so let, let's call it a 19-20 split, maybe instead of a 40-something split. I mean, a lot of those fights are, are, are you know, push come to shove. Uh, but it's a heavyweight division, man. If you don't got a right hand, you don't belong being here, man. No one ever told me, hey, Dom, you hit him with that right hand, but he, he didn't go down. Man, I've hit him with right hands. They went to sleep. They went out. That's the reason why I'm, you know, 20 and 1 and 18 KOs. Um, yes, there have been some, some dog hard fighters that I've hit with the hit with the right hand. They went down on the canvas and ended up finishing the fight. By all means, but it might have been my second, seventh pro fight, something in that world. Never has it been at the end of my career like it has now. Thank you guys. That's super. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.